Hey, code to the interface, code to the interface. A lot of us create interfaces just to satisfy that mantra. How are we supposed to be using interfaces in our object-oriented design and in our code? I'm Chuck McCullough, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at that. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video, tell your friends about it, and let's dive into this topic of interfaces. For the point of our discussion, let's take a look at a class called Circle. Now we could write this in any language. We put it in C sharp here, but you could practically convert this to Java or C++. In our class, we have a circle and it has a radius. Uh, we've got a constructor function that takes a radius and a color. We also have a property, a getter and setter for that fill color. And the circle implements two methods, calculate area, and calculate perimeter. Now what we see happen so much of the time in bad code or bad design is extracting an identical interface that really doesn't accomplish anything. And here are some of the symptoms of why that's a bad idea. We have a class now and an interface that are identical. So every time we add a property or we add a method or we do anything to either the interface or the class, we have to make the same change to the other. Now, another smell that we recognize is that there's only one implementer of this interface, and it's the class that it was extracted from. And that leads us to the last thing, and that's where the client declares the variable of the interface type, but it news the class type. Now, why does this happen? Well, I think uh, designers are thinking about interfaces as an alternative to inheritance and they're, they're motivated to create interfaces for the same reasons that they're motivated to define inheritance. And inheritance is a similar solution, a similar tool, but it's got a different motivation. With inheritance, abstractions are derived from the concrete types. We're defining interfaces from the caller's point of view. The circle class, shouldn't have anything to do with defining an interface that might be used by a client. Now, when we create interfaces like we just did with the tool, it, it leads us to code like this where the client is dependent on both the class and the interface. In an object-oriented design, the client shouldn't depend on the library. So whoever's using the circles shouldn't have dependency on circle. In other words, it needs to be inverted, something we call dependency inversion. Now, how do we define the interface correctly? Well, let's take a look at this client code. We've got a method called calculate total area, and we're passing in an array of doubles. And in a loop, we go through and we create a circle from each one of those doubles, which is the radius of the circle. And then we calculate the area of the circle and sum or total it up into a total area variable, which we eventually return. We have, uh, of course, the class is actually creating the concrete type. And we really want to try to isolate new. We need to have the dependency, which is circle. Uh, we need to get rid of that. And if you're newing something, you're very inflexible. So the code's creating a concrete type. It's inflexible because it can only calculate the area of circles. We also have the fact that this is dependent on both the interface and the concrete type. We also have a bigger problem, and this is something that escapes a lot of design. Our code, calculate total area, is dependent on a type, in this case, circle and iCircle, that has methods that are never used by our calculate total area. We only require one method, and that's calculate area. Yet we are dependent on a type that has a bunch of other capabilities as well, something we call fat interfacing. And, and it is a problem because now we require something that is more complex and more involved than what's really necessary. And that's, that's really the reason that we're motivated to create the interface. So let's look at that and, and what we need to do to actually correct these problems that we talked about. Okay, the solid design principles, and we've got a video series on that as well. So take a look at the card above. The I in solid uh, interface segregation and the D dependency inversion tells us that the client here should be defining and owning the interface. 
the interface is defined by the caller, not the callee. So before, circle defined the interface. We need to have the code we just looked at, the client code, the caller, determine the interface. And we're going to get rid of the new inside this code and have the objects passed in to the algorithm rather than being created by the algorithm. So let's look at our area calculator another way. And we're going to define an interface based on just the methods that we require, and that is only the calculate area method. Also notice that we're passing into our method instead of radii, radii instead of uh, radiuses or radii, we're passing in measurable objects. Now, anything could implement measurable. Circles, rectangles, triangles, houses, dogs, cats, anything that could return an area that can be computed and those objects can be otherwise completely unrelated to one another. We also did some fancy stuff here in this method with uh, the new C sharp feature called expression methods, which allows us to avoid the curly braces and the return keyword for single line methods. The fat arrow here on the left is the introducer for the expression method. It looks like a Lambda expression, but it's not. This is the Lambda expression, uh, the method that we're defining on the fly that we're passing into the method sum. So a little bit going on here with C sharp, but the point is that calculate total area defined its own interface and that interface measurable is owned by the development team that also created the calculate total area method. So now we've inverted the dependency because circle is dependent on measurable as it has to mention measurable in its definition and it also has to implement the interface. And conveniently, it actually did implement that interface already. And this is what we mean by dependency inversion. Now we see this technique used throughout the .NET library. And this is why we know this is a good idea because it works. We see this in, in all standard libraries where the library defines an interface that has to be implemented by the algorithms. Now in C Sharp, we can define interfaces using the keyword interface. Same with Java. In C++, we can still define interfaces. We use the keyword class and we just define a class that's completely pure virtual in other words, an interface. Now we can have default method implementations in interfaces, but that's a different topic. And you can take a look at our videos on that as well. We can also in .NET define something known as a delegate. Now in Java, that's called a functional interface. It's just one method rather than a bunch of methods that are together. And so in the sum method, in .NET, the link sum method accepts an interface as its parameter. That's how it defines its, its input parameter as a delegate. So it's not a full blown interface with a whole bunch of methods potentially, but instead just a single method signature. Sum wants us to pass in a func. Func is a delegate that's also defined as part of the .NET library. So we don't own that. It was defined by the same team of people that created the sum method. And the func is uh, supposed to return a double and it takes a measurable as its input parameter. That's what sum calls in order to get the individual double values that needed to be added together. So the caller defined and maintains that interface. The .NET library implementers defined and implement the interface func that is required, we have to implement that. So the caller defined it and the, the callee has to implement it. So again, that inversion, that inversion of control, that dependency uh, upside down, that dependency inversion. The lambda that we're passing in, m arrow, m calculate area, that is the on the fly definition of our func delegate. So the application programmer defined that. There are also some uh, interfaces used in .NET 
for handling sorted sets, sorted collections. In fact, the class sorted set requires either an iComparable object type or an iComparer external uh, comparison com comparator in order to assist with the sorting. The .NET library, the caller, owns those two interfaces and the application developer will implement that interface in order to leverage the more complex algorithm that Sorted Set provides. So remember, interfaces are created and owned by the caller. That's a completely different motivation from inheritance where the inheritance hierarchy is typically owned by the same project team. The abstract base class is owned by the same developers that implement the concrete classes. Interfaces are created and owned by the caller. The callee depends on and implements the interface, hence the dependency inversion. We just flipped that over. We decoupled the caller by removing that dependency and making the caller dependent on a type that they define themselves. It genericizes the caller because now the caller algorithm can work with a large variety of data types. Now in reality, oftentimes these interfaces are not explicitly owned by the caller, but instead become part of a third party ownership. By genericizing the caller, we're no longer restricting the implementation to a specific class or family of objects like geometric shapes. Any object that implements the interface can be used. So even things that aren't geometric shapes like a house can implement iMeasurable because you can definitely have the area of a house but a house doesn't fall into the geometry category quite easily, so I don't think it would make a good subclass. Now, as we talked about inheritance throughout this uh, quite a bit through this presentation, uh, please take a look at uh, our videos on that topic as well, because inheritance also has its place. It's a different tool to solve a different problem. There's not a better or a worse. We use interfaces where we should, as we discussed, and we use inheritance where we should, as we discussed. Hey, I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, make sure you hit that subscribe button and help support our channel. Check us out on Udemy and also at our website, mcculloughassociates.com. You can find the links in the description below. I'm Chuck McCullough, have a nice day.